In this video, we're going to see how these drilly things do their drilly things. G'day guys, today we are going to look at the mechanisms between an impact driver, a impact drill, and a rotary hammer drill. And we'll chuck in an impact wrench as well, briefly, just for good measure. If you are here to see these tools being used to drive screws and drill holes, that's not what this video is about. We're going to have a look inside each tool at the mechanisms that make them work and the differences between those mechanisms and the differences that those mechanisms are used for so what you would use these tools for but we're not going to be seeing who's the quickest or anything like that so let's get into it these three tools all do very different things yet they can do very similar things an impact driver is primarily used for driving screws an impact drill so this is known as a combi drill or in this country it's called a hammer drill but this is also called a rotary hammer drill concrete drill. There's a lot of these names cross over. Some people call these impact drills. It's very confusing if you don't know what you're talking about. We're going to look at just the mechanisms inside them. This is what I'm going to call an impact driver for the rest of this video. I'm going to call this an impact drill and I'm going to call this a rotary hammer drill. Even though they all impact, they impact in very very different ways. We'll first look at the insides of an impact driver. This is the inside of an impact driver mechanism. An impact driver primarily used for making driving screws easy. Instead of you having to fight your drill to put them in, this thing taps them in and makes your life much easier. There's no effort on your wrist, but they are rather noisy. So this is how the mechanism works. We'll try and keep the terminology as simple as possible so not to confuse anybody. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just yell at the screen and I will try and rectify things. So, when you pull the trigger on your impact driver, this large chunk of steel here spins around the whole thing, this large mass with these two lugs on. Those two lugs then come in contact with these two lugs, which are connected to your quarter inch hex chuck on the front here. That goes on there, those spins, hits these, and around they go. Nice and easy. When it hits, creates the resistance with your screw, bang, taps it in round a little bit, taps it round. This is rotational force, okay? There's no force coming forward. It's not axial force, it's all rotational. Bang, 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 bang. Slowly turns your screw around and around easily. It's not hammering the screw in from the end. When these two chunks of metal hit each other and the resistance of the screw stops them, this is loaded on a spring and it will come back like that, see the whole thing can move backwards so that it lifts over these metal tangs on here so that it can do the next spin for 180 degrees and connect again and it does that thousands of times every minute and that is how an impact driver drives your screws in a rotational fashion not a forward hammering fashion now another tool that has a very similar system to that but instead of having a quarter inch hex chuck is an impact wrench which has a half inch square chuck or a three eighths or a quarter or a three quarter or even an inch that can give you a lot more torque if you are using sockets whereas with the hex one you're more likely to drive screws so a small impact wrench works in exactly the same fashion you just have that half inch like I say on the end rather than the quarter inch hex on a small impact wrench the mechanism is identical. When you get up into larger impact wrenches this of course gets much bulkier and you provide a lot more wax with each turn so you can drive bigger sockets with more torque but still you have the identical rotational forces rather than an axial force driving through the center and hammering forward. It is just spinning around. So those first two primarily designed for driving in fasteners and undoing fasteners. These two, however, designed primarily for drilling, although of course you can do fasteners with this as well. So the impact functions on these are actually designed for drilling, not fastening. So they work in quite a different way. They're designed for drilling through concrete, and so they need to chip away, and they use their force in an axial motion, backwards and forwards in this direction, rather than rotational force in this direction. So both designed to drill in concrete, but this one doesn't move anywhere near as much as this one can. This one uses standard drill bits. 
This one you need SDS drill bits, SDS plus. They are a different shaped drill bit which I will show in a moment. But first we will have a look at the mechanism inside a standard hammer drill, combi drill or as I said earlier an impact drill. I've pulled apart an old Hitachi impact drill and I am now going to cut this open just so you can see the mechanism underneath without me pulling it all apart mostly because I've taken the screw out of here and I still can't get the damn thing apart, it's all seized up and stuffed so I'll attack it with the angle grind Hear that? That's the impact mechanism. Now that we're in here, we can have a close look. This is the part we're talking about for the hammer here. There is a spring loading in there. And if we look real carefully, you can see the teeth on both parts. And as it rides up and down, bang, between peak and valley, that's all that gives you your hammers. That's why it's really painful to use one of these to do any big jobs with a masonry drill bit. The biggest movement is from there to there. That gap there, that's your depth. Pretty, pretty small. Now when it comes to the rotary hammer drill, hopefully I won't have to pull it apart in quite a destructive manner to show you how it works, because it could get a bit expensive. This rotary hammer drill will hopefully give me a slight advantage in the explanation front in that it has a removable chuck so hopefully that will make things slightly easier so we'll basically look at the two different components the chuck itself and what makes the chuck tick now just remember these tiny little teeth here and how small a movement you get when we compare it to this one this uses an SDS plus drill bit this is an SDS plus drill bit and when it goes in, you just poke them in, very simple, and the range of movement compared to the last one, massive. Look at that. So you can get way bigger impacts. We're not talking about just tiny little vibrations like the other one, doing about a millimeter at a time. This one you're talking like 20 millimeters at a time. Vastly superior when you're drilling into concrete. We take a close look inside this chuck, should hopefully be able to see at the top and bottom of the chuck two slides they are permanently fixed steel glides and on the right hand side you can see a ball a ball bearing ball nothing on the other side so you've just got the one pin there that allows you to put this drill bit in fairly easily and quickly in a couple of different locations those two guides top and bottom go over this part of the drill and the ones either side will go over the ball bearing, whichever one happens to slot over it. So that is your full range of movement, the length of that channel. Now is where it gets tricky because I need to show you how this pin comes in and out. But rotary hammer drills only work with pressure, the same way the impact drill does. When you've got it in the right mode, it will still only work when you've got pressure pushing against it. Once the pressure it feels the pressure, it engages the mechanism and away it goes. I'll try and demonstrate this just by putting some pressure on with this drill bit. So there you can see that that pin punches in and out which allows this to slide up and down inside our chuck. This impacts at far lower impact rate than the impact drill we saw before this. The impact drill before this, 30,000 odd beats per minute, whereas this you're looking at only five to 6,000. But because they are much bigger impacts, it works far quicker, far more efficiently, and a hundred times better than any impact drill. Now hopefully if I've done my job right, you'll have a better understanding between how an impact driver and impact wrench work compared to an impact drill and a rotary hammer drill. While we're here, I might um have a look inside this one. Got the 36 volt open here. Maybe we'll compare it to the 40 volt. See how many differences there are between the 18 times 2 and the new 40 volt XGT. So remember, rotational impacts, tiny little baby Ford impacts, massive Ford impacts. 
Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I do a heap of tool reviews on like all the tools you've just seen in this video, for instance. And yeah, I'll see you on another one soon. Stay safe and all that.